So my name is Maximiliano, right? You can call me Max, that's OK. Uh, I'm from Argentina, right? I have been doing uh, web development and mobile development since uh, 1995, right? So a long time ago. Um, I'm also a trainee. I'm doing training for New Circle. They have a booth there, so you can go there and see what cool trainings they have. Um, I am the author of these two books from O'Reilly Media, Programming the Mobile Web and jQuery Mobile. Um, we will talk about glass, right, and wearable technologies. Um, so first, just a quick idea, a quick guide on the experience, what the glassware is, something called the timeline, and the browser. Okay, that's the thing we're going to cover in 30, 35 minutes, so we can try to keep some space for questions. Um, so please, questions at the end or, or after, right, I will be here, so if you have any question on glass or other wearable technologies, I will be glad to answer. Some quick disclaimer, I'm not from Google, right? I'm part of a program called Explorers. So um, I have an independent vision of this device in particular and, and uh, kind of apps that we can create. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, some of you, right, known as uh, some kind of uh, a smart people wearing glasses, right? So um, we're going to talk about wearable devices, right? And the, sometimes, right, the first thing that you, like, Imagine when I'm saying something like this is this. Remember GetSmart, right? Some kind of a phone shoe. But when we're talking about wearable devices, we're talking about right now smart glasses, smart watches, smart clothes maybe, and probably smart shoes, right? Sending information from uh, the floor, right, to our devices or something like that. And so that's basically wearable devices. And before talking about the glass, let me show you, for example, here, I have a smartwatch, right? Just to give you an idea of uh, the, this first release of a smartwatch that are there. This is the Sony smartwatch, right? So it has some apps inside, right? So of course, you have Facebook, right, Twitter. Um, I'm not saying you're going to post updates from here, at least for now, right? But at least you have like notifications. In this case, the calendar is saying to me that I should be here, right, making this talk. Uh, I can install apps. Uh, in fact, there is even a browser, right? A web browser for the smartwatch. Uh, I can load pages, right? So um, I can even load the Dreamforce uh, website. So uh, this is a kind of the first release of smartphones out there, right? Um, so it's loading the whole page, right? Of course, I mean, it's not really optimized for a smartwatch, but it's there and it's working, okay? Um, this is the kind of uh, experiences that we will start to see in the next few months or even a year or, or two years, okay? So it's not just the class, right? We can create apps or services or websites to different kind of devices, including classes. But now let's talk about the glass experience, right? Uh, because uh, let's say it's the first uh, big device out there that is for, for this wearable technologies category. So first, let me show you this video. There is no audio, so don't worry. So this is uh, a book signing I did uh, a few months ago here in, in San Francisco in Fluent Conference. And this was the first time I could basically record the whole book signing uh, from my perspective, right? So uh, this is the kind of things that you can do with these devices that are not interfering with my hands, for example, right? So uh, I don't need a cameraman behind me, so I can do some kind of stuff uh, like this. Of course, that um, recording and taking pictures is not the only thing that you can do with these devices, right? Sometimes it, it feels like uh, all the people are talking just about taking pictures and recording videos. Um, this is another example. So uh, before uh, San Francisco, I've been last week in Europe, um, 10 days ago, basically. Uh, and that's basically Tallinn in Estonia. So I was there, right, looking at that nice view. And basically, the class was suggesting me some um, Attractions, by the way, this is a screenshot, so this is not Photoshop, right? This is a real screenshot. And when I was there, I was saying, okay, I want to go back to the hotel. So yeah, I asked the class to get me back to the hotel and I get uh, automatic directions, right, to get there uh, in a city that I don't know and I don't know even the language, right, Estonian. Um, so first, let's uh, talk about some myths on the, on the glass experience. First, uh, some people think that this is some kind of uh, uh, sci-fi, uh, virtual reality glass that immerse me in a, in a new reality. The thing is that that's not true. If, if you look at me, 
we are we are going to have eye contact, right? So it's not basically in front of my of my view. It's in one part at the top. The next uh, myth says that it seems like the glass is the evolution of the mobile phones, right? And it's not exactly that. At, at, at this at this point, at this first point, it's more than a companion, right? The same for the watch. Right? It's more than a companion that will help me doing some tasks without using my phone. So some just quick ideas. This is not a, it's not a screen, basically, that is in front of my eye. It's a projection that I'm, I'm trying to see a projection there, right? So if I turn it on, now I'm seeing something around that, right? It's not, I don't need to, to change focus. Uh, some people think that uh, it's, it's uncomfortable because you need to change focus. That's not uh, the idea. So now I will plug myself to give you just a really, really quick introduction to the experience, right? Again, I'm not here to, to, to demo the, the product itself. Here about talking about how you can develop services. But it's important to understand how the, the system works to understand the idea, right? So of course, the, this is exactly what I'm seeing. The main difference is that for my point of view, it's transparent, right? Uh, but I can basically jump between content here, right? like something about hangovers. Uh, so that's you, right? Eight minutes ago. So information that I have from different um, like apps that I have installed here. Of course, some pictures. Uh, there is um, some in, in interesting information here that the, the tent out there is the North America largest tent, right? I have received that information because I'm here. And I can click here and go to the Salesforce website, right, from here. Can I browse the web? Yes, I can. Um, I will show you that later. So um, of course, we have this, uh, well, I have more information here. For example, if I want to, to go to Google, right, because there is an event in, in Google right now, or to Twin Peaks, I have the information here to go directly. And I can use the OK glass, uh, take a picture. I'm pretty sure you have heard this a lot, right? And I can share this directly with Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, or any other app in just one second. Um, from, uh, so for, from yesterday, we also have now some native apps here, okay? There are some cool apps. For example, I can say, okay, Glass, translate this. And now I can look for something, well, I, I need to change uh, maybe languages. For example, I can say English, Spanish, or English, French. And I can try to look something in English. I, th this is not comfortable, right? You know that. The thing is that I should have something near me in English, and it will give me the translation directly. So it's a live app, right? It's an offline app. So um, this is um, the 101 experience on the class. Now let's go back to, to the presentation to talk about development, right? So, but it's important to understand the experience. As you can see, it's not just a mobile phone UI on my eye or in my eye. So it's a different device. It's not just transparent apps, the same apps that we have on mobile devices, but with a, a transparent background. It's more than that, right? And it's a limited augmented reality. So it's not like uh, right now showing me your faces and your Facebook account, right? Because it's adding me information there. Now let's talk about the glassware. Glassware is the name for the software that we can develop for the glass, OK? Uh, and we have, again, this eternal question, right? Native versus web. But now is the, the glass version of the native versus web that at this point, it's native versus cloud, right? So for the glass, now I can create native apps with the GDK since this week, right? There is a preview uh, version of the GDK glass development kit available. It's based on Java. It's based on the Android SDK. So if, you, if you're an Android developer, you can start doing uh, Android um, glass apps using the Android SDK. Or you can use a Miro API. The Miro API is cloud-based. That means that that application will run on your server. It can be a Java, Java, PHP, .NET, wherever uh, server-side language you are using, right? And you're going to use just, or even some Salesforce services. Uh, you're just going to use some HTTP calls, right, to the, to the Google Cloud to send and receive information. So uh, while well, I did the demo, I will skip this part. So how can you install apps right now on the glass? 
There is a website called MyGlass. This is at least now because we are still in the prototype stage, right? I go to a website. How many of you have installed Candy Crush on Facebook? No, no one? No? I have a couple of yeses, some shy faces. But basically, it's the same thing. To install apps on the glass today, I need to give permission to that app from a website or from my mobile phone to, to get access to my glass, right? That's the way to install apps today. And that, that in, it is in, the, in the case of uh, Glassware that works on a server, so the server will use HTTPS to communicate with the Google Cloud. And it will say, OK, go and, and say, this guy that is right now in San Francisco, that we, they, they have the, the largest tent in, in North America. And Google will, will send that content to me, right? So this is how it works. If I click, if I do something, if I action on that particular content, that action will go back to Google, and Google will communicate with you using HTTP or HTTPS. So it will basically, you will have like a web service that will listen in from Google's calls. That's the idea, right? So that's the mirror API. Um, you can, you can uh, like set up your app from, from the website or from, from the mobile phone. And even you can get information from the user's behavior, right? And, and to adapt the, your app to the user's behavior. But for example, the CNN app allows me to like, set up different kind of alerts that I would like to receive on my glass. So the Glassware, for Glassware, we have two options now. The Miro API server side or the offline GDK. The GDK has permission to access my camera. For example, that translation app, uh, it also has permission to work offline. Um, and it can like, uh, listen for some uh, services. I can also, for example, start a, a timer or something like that offline. I don't need connection. For the Miro API, I need connection, right? And usually, you will need to create a new architecture from your point of view, server side or client side. It's not like, OK, let's take the same code base we have for Android and create a GDK application. Or let's take the mobile website we have and convert that to a, to a glass. You need to sit down, have a, a great brainstorming to see what kind of apps and what kind of services you can provide to the user. Right? That's, that should be the idea. Now let's talk about the timeline for a minute. A timeline is basically past, now, and future. And it's the basic UI of the class. So I will plug myself in again. No, this is not the one I want. This one. OK. Um, oh, I need to plug both sides of the, of the USB cable. OK, here we are. So this is the, the timeline, right? So when, when I turn on the, the glass, I'm on my present. That's why you are seeing right, the, um, the time there. And basically, I have a timeline that is crossing here my body. Right? Basically, my past is on my back, and my future is on my front. So basically, you are my future right now. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry about me. So uh, for example, if I want to see something from my past, like a picture I took, I need to bring it from my back. Right? So I, I do this gesture from my back. Right? I'm doing this from my back. So there is a lag in the animation. That's basically the USB cable. Here it works really well, right? And, and from my future, I mean, for example, I can try to see things that if I want to go to Twin Peaks to take some great pictures, uh, if it's in my future. The same, have the same for the things I need to do. For example, uh, that's the weather, uh, my agenda, my schedule, places nearby. So things that I might want to, to see later. I can also check here my flights uh, on my future. So that's the timeline, OK? So it's important to understand the timeline because it's basically the UI of the class. So there is no applications menu right, or, or home screen. It's just the timeline. And we are going to, to create timeline items right, that are known as cards. That's what we are going to do, cards. Okay? So that's a card. Every rectangle you saw there, it's a card. That's the main unit of a glassware. We have different kind of cards. Like, for example, if I take a picture, that card is a shifting card. It goes to my past. I have a standard cards that I, I have received from CNN or any glassware. They go to the past. And I also have pin cards. 
important things that I will need later that go to my future. And they are pinned there. They are stuck there. Again, I send cards locally with a GDK app or through HTTP from my server. That's how I send cards to the user. And it's probable that the user will never see our card because all the cards are in my path and it's an infinite path. Okay, so and that's okay. The user will use the glass when the user wants. So the, the idea here is to send information to be there when the user needs it. Okay? So we can send text cards, we can send image and video cards, or HTML cards. We can design cards in HTML, HTML5. And we can have card actions. So every card can has a menu inside. How can I listen to these actions? If it's, a, if it's a native app from Java locally, if it's a cloud-based app, I will get the response on a web service. Okay? Google is going to call me, and it will say, hey, that user has just clicked that action on that card. And you need to have all the database to support that on your, on your side. How to reply? Using the same technique. You can update the car. You can send a new car. And now with, with, GDK, with the GDK, with native apps, we have live cards. So cards that are live. So I can have like a clock or a, or a, or a stopwatch or a, an app that is counting my steps while, I, while I'm walking. Something like this. It's a live car. Okay? And now we have also immersion mode for, G, for the GDK. The immersion mode means that I will trigger an app like OK Glass, translate this, and basically I will get a full screen experience for that app. It can be a game also. Okay, that's, that's called immersion mode. We have contextual events like geolocation. Your app can read user's location all the time. So you can know all the time where the user is if, you, if the user is granting permission for that, right? And you can do something about that, like sending or updating information that will be useful for that user. We can also uh, subscribe to the share. So if I take a picture right now, and then I click share, I can share that picture to all the glassware that are listening to that action. Okay? Um, and I can also attach my glassware to the OK Glass menu. So that's why I can say, OK Glass, play a game, for example, and it will open a game. So the car is the king on the, on the timeline, right? That's the main unit. We have menu items that are actions over cards, contextual events such as geolocation, and we can keep, we can, we can like uh, choose between cloud-based apps or native apps, at least today. Now the browser. Can I browse the web here? Yes. There are two ways to, to trigger the browser right now, using uh, Google or through a card action. So I can have an action that will trigger um, a website, OK? So last quick demo. So you can see how the browser works. Because uh, I think it, it's interesting. Let me plug in. I hope Google can make a wireless screencast later. That will work great. So I can, I can Google something. I can say, OK, Glass, Google Dreamforce. For example, or I can, if you look here, uh, it was somewhere, read more. So these are all actions, right? I can go to the, this 10 car, and I can say view website. And it will open the browser now, right? It's loading the website. And uh, the, the big question is usually, how can I browse the web using my glass, right? Let's hope the Wi-Fi is working properly. Uh, yeah, it's loading. Uh, so. Basically, we have two ways to, to browse the, it's, it's downloading images, I think. So I can use my finger to scroll, right? Um, even if you think, can you read that? Yeah, I can read that. Grow sales faster with the world's number one sales app. I can basically read what I'm seeing here. If, if it's a mobile optimized app. Okay, here we have, here we have the website. And the next question is, how can I click? Let's say I want to click on free trial. So doing this, huh? no. So the, the idea, right, it's, a, it's an experimental browser, so I'm not sure if it's going to be the final version. And a quick warning, it looks really weird from your point of view, right? From my point of view, it's okay. So I will use two fingers. I will push two fingers here, 
And if you look there, there is a pointer, right? So I move my head now, and I point where I want to click. So uh, there, right? Free trial. And then I can say, OK, I want to click there. OK? I'm not saying it's the best experience, but it's, it's really nice, I mean, if you try it. Um, it was a clever way to basically do the pointing thing. So for the browser, let me, uh, OK. For the browser, we can scroll or point and click. And if you, if you know what responsive web design is, is the ability to adapt a website to different screen sizes, you can use these values right, to, to query on the glass. So you can create like a specific version for glass. Of course, we are not so many guys out there using glasses right now, because it's still in, 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 uh, in a preview mode, in the developer preview mode and explorer's mode. But uh, you will be able to do something especially for the glass in the future. Even if you are an HTML5 developer, you can uh, use video, audio in HTML5. Device motion, the device motion API is the API that allows me to read head movement because I'm reading accelerometer and gyroscope. So I can use JavaScript to read my head's movement, not my thoughts yet. Um, and I, I can also use scroll and touch events, OK? Unfortunately, no geolocation, a speech, or camera API from the JavaScript point of view yet. So the browser is better than, better than it looks like, right? From your point of view. It's a silly experimental. I'm pretty sure new ideas will come on how to browse the web or browse content. And I'm, I'm excited about the idea of a car plus HTML5. So for example, from your server, you can send a user. The user can be your user, your customers, your employees. You can send a car saying something. That, uh, I mean, there is no more stock on that product or whatever. And the user can see the car. And you can trigger a website from there. And a website can be an HTML5 app, right? Or a game, or wherever you want. So I, I'm excited about it. You don't need to create native apps. You can use HTML5 and a car to trigger that HTML5 app. So I don't have a glass. How many of you have glasses? I'm seeing one there, right? So you can go and grab this guy. So uh, if you don't have a glass, right, first, don't steal one. Right? Uh, why? Well, uh, we can disable remotely the glasses, and um, you're going to hell. So try to not steal one. Um, there is a, an official simulator called um, Playground from Google. It's just to see how the cards will look like. There is also glassseam.com, where you can upload even a picture and see how your, your car will look like on the, on the real world, right? It's just a simulation of how, of, for, for, from a design point of view, right? Just that. Um, if you want some hardcore uh, experiences, you can search for these two GitHub projects, ShenodoShare and Miro API Emulator. ShenodoShare is basically uh, some kind of uh, the, the same Android, because this is an Android device. So the same UI that I have here running on a phone. Right? So at least you can try to see how it looks like. Um, and the Miro API Emulator is to, oops, sorry. The Miro API Emulator is a way to you to install your own private cloud, right? To emulate the cloud, the, the Google's cloud, to see if your web services are working uh, or something like that. At the end, you will need a glass, right? To understand the experience, because again, it's not the same thing as a, as a phone. It's something different. So you need to understand it. So at the end, you will need one, okay? So you can go to that website and see where, when can you get one. And so what's next for you? You can go to the Glass developer's website and see all the documentation. You can download source code uh, and samples. So you can start trying with it. And I suggest you to go to the Google developer's YouTube channel because there are a couple of hours of video with more information, technical information, for developers on how to develop for the Glass. For the wearable technology, well, there are uh, some competitors that are coming of the Glass. Um, Maybe we are going to see more, more smartwatches, right? So we have the rumor of a possible iWatch from Apple. We don't know, right? But um, it, it's something that it's, it's possible, right? So the next year, uh, the next two or three years will be really important for wearable technologies. And it will be the, the test for this technology on the society, on the community, to see if they're going to work or not. So I mean, we have the next year or two to see if this is going to be the future or not. I'm not really sure yet. It's a possible future for sure, but uh, it, it depends on the society, right? So wrapping up, for the glass, you need to understand the experience. 
Right now, you can develop uh, apps, Glassware, using the Mirror API, using the GDK, the native SDK, or HTML5 app for the browser. Okay? And remember, this is just the beginning. This is just starting. Okay? And if you don't like this, you can join these guys. Right? Stop the cyborgs. Um, they have even the, those nice sneaker, stickers that you can put in your house or on your office. So thank you. Now we have some questions. We have time for questions. Thanks. Any question? We have a microphone. OK. So the question is about connectivity, right? So uh, what kind of connectivity do I have here on the glass? So the glass today, this particular prototype, remember this is a prototype, uh, has uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So uh, in this case, it can use your phone right, and use the connection on your, on, on your phone. It can be 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi, wherever you want. But it has Wi-Fi by itself, so uh, I don't need my phone, basically, right? So, and uh, the second part of the question is, do you think that we will have like a 3G in the future, 3G glass? I don't know, right? I'm not from Google, so, but remember this is the first prototype. So I'm pretty sure that maybe next year, uh, when the device is, will be in the market, uh, we will have devices from different vendors, right? Cheap devices, expensive devices, so different levels of devices. So we will have devices with 4G, with 3G, without that, only Wi-Fi. So it will be like a smartphones, right? It will be a mess, basically. Okay, thank you.